we're talking about the offensive line. And when I go back to my Madden ratings, one of the things I did is I posted based on what I saw at the first scrimmage. And what I saw at the first scrimmage was Blake Miller starting at right tackle. And so it was Jordan McFadden, Marcus Tate, which, by the way, Al, I'll just mm-hmm. go ahead and throw that out there. Those guys ragging on you last show about Marcus Tate's not a left tackle. Paul right. Strelow this morning said he's a left tackle. And by the way, he played left tackle in the scrimmage. So nice. there you go. All right. Yeah. So Big Al, you were on it. So <laughs> no doubt he definitely can play it. He definitely has played it. And he's mm-hmm. getting reps there. Talk about will, he, will he start there is a different story, but yeah, he can right. play it. And I think he, he can certainly do that in the future. Um, there might be still more development for Tristan Lee. And so maybe he can fill in, you know, if he mm-hmm. needs to in sub situations, who knows? Sure. Um, but, you know, if, he, if everything goes like last year, McFadden will play every single dog on snap. So <laughs> you've got McFadden, you've got Marcus Tate. Obviously, we have Will Putnam at center because mm-hmm. they need a veteran presence there. And from what we understand, he hasn't had any issues snapping the ball, maybe just a couple this preseason. And then you have right guard, which was the big question mark. Who could play that? There's multiple guys that could play it, but they're all kind of coming back from injury. Mm -hmm. Who's the one guy or the two guys or three guys that haven't been injured or struggling to show what they can do? Well, it's basically the true freshman, Colin Sadler and Blake Miller, that Allen and Houston and I all love. Mm -hmm. Or it's Walker Parks. I mean, and Walker Parks said, hey, you know what? I can just put me anywhere. Put me in the game, coach. Put me anywhere, right guard, left guard, right tackle, left tackle, whatever. Put me in there. I will do it. And so Walker Parks has said, move me over. Now, last year they tried, they put they put the the greenest offensive lineman in the middles, in the guard position. And can you say that really worked out very well? Uh, Mm -hmm. Not really. So what they kind of have decided to do, it looks like, is sandwich everybody together lump them all together, left guard, left tackle, center, right guard, are all guys who have a ton of snaps. And now right tackle is going to be Blake Miller, we assume. And yes, he has no snaps, but it's just that right corner. And what we're hearing is he is legit, and he is holding his own, and he is the real deal. So Houston, I'll start with you here, because not only do I think he's the real deal, but ESPN published its 2022 preseason true freshman All-America team. Cade Klubnick was on it. Offensive lineman Blake Miller. Here's what ESPN said. The Tigers need help along the offensive line despite Walker Parks already having a role at right tackle. Miller has a chance to play early. That could entail Parks moving to guard, which we talked about. If that happens, it's a good problem for Clemson given it means that Miller is going to be in a starting role. Houston, we'll start with you. Do you agree? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I see why people are a little apprehensive of the whole freshman nature, but, I mean, they started Mitch Hyatt, and it worked out pretty good. And, I mean, from all accounts, Blake Miller is a lot bigger, leaner, meaner, whatever kind of adjective you want to add to him than Mitch (laughs) Hyatt. Mitch Hyatt, I mean, I'll make the case that Mitch Hyatt was the best left left tackle in Clemson history, no Mm -hmm. doubt. Um, and Blake Miller, hey, look, if he's that good, get the boy on the field. And, I mean, that's the same can go for Colin Sadler as well. I know he's got a little bit more to work up to, um, but uh, it sounds like he's making strides as well. So if he's in the rotation, anybody, if it's going with the best five, go with the best five. And if that means playing one freshman or two freshmen, who cares? Blake Miller, if he's the most qualified guy, get him on the field. And tell your, your, your boy Bob Sadler – he ain't got to wait too much longer to see his, his baby boy play a little bit more. Bob Sadler's baby boy. We love that. Bob Sadler's baby boy. We love Bob. Blake Miller, number 78, Big Al. Six mm-hmm. foot six, 315 pounds from Strongville, Ohio. By the way, Nick Eason had a funny story about how when he was an intern, he interned with Blake Miller's dad when Blake was a baby. So... <laughs> You know, small world, now Blake Miller is an offensive tackle for Clemson. And Nick Eason is a coach for Clemson. According to ClemsonTigers.com, a physically imposing blocker who continues the pipeline of talent from Ohio, followed the lineage of Jackson Carmen and Matt Bockhorst, another highly touted O-lineman. 
starting at left tackle in high school, did not allow a sack as a junior or senior in a total of 352 pass attempts, a three-year starter at Strongville, first team all Ohio Division I, first team all region, first team all district, selection in 2020 and 2021, four-time Greater Cleveland Conference All-Academic Selection, four-year starter on the offensive line at left tackle. Now, we know we know that in high school, typically the biggest, baddest, best offensive linemen, they play left tackle. Mm-hmm. Um, now, obviously, in this situation, that, all, that doesn't always happen. So what? Uh, now he's going to be playing right tackle. Do you think that he can carry over his success from high school into right tackle no doubt yeah i think this is what's funny is you know we hear about all these things and and we're having to go off what we hear most of us don't get to see this uh so we're you know we're reading notes and reading updates and all that kind of stuff but and Dabo could come out with an entirely different starting five for all we know against georgia tech we we really (laughs) don't know but we are going to go on the assumption that blake miller is every bit the guy we're hearing about and he's going to be the starter at right tackle and i swear this happened to me the past couple of seasons I've gotten sucked in. Everybody has said the offensive line is going to be better this year, and it hasn't happened. I've been sucked in, and I I promise myself it's not going to happen this year. I'm waiting until I see it on the field, and yet here I am. And we talk about how awesome Blake Miller is and the fact that we got – Walker Parks moving inside and, you know, potentially there's there could be a move on the other side. You know, Will Putnam is now handling center and he's doing amazing with his snaps and everything. And it's just like, here I am. We're going to be good on the offensive line. Finally, I can't believe it. And I'm just oh, I'm hoping we can we can really make something happen because we've been waiting to be good for for quite some time now. And I think that's, you know, had a lot of effect on on the game and DJ last year, just like the receivers and, you know, whatever, uh, you know, shortcomings he had as well. So it's good to have it. You know, this kind of hype around the offensive line, it's good to get them some confidence going. They need to gel together and, and make something happen because a lot of the season depends on how well they do. A lot of people are talking about the fact that you can't ignore the offensive line. Does it does the offensive is the offensive line what starts everything? Do you feel like, Al, when when you look back at last season, is the first thing that needs to be fixed the offensive line, the wide receivers, the quarterback? You know, what do you think? Dude, that is a debate. I remember having this debate last year, and I don't know that we ever came to a consensus <laughs> on what this was. Uh, it was just, it was an unbelievably bad, you know, bad season all, all the way around. The quarterback had it had issues. Wide receivers, I thought at first the wide receivers should bear the most blame, and, and mainly, I mean, we were down like what three, four receivers, uh, <laughs> and, and I mean, so that's bad luck, and that's not necessarily their fault, but. You, you know, start they just, playing guys that are five ten and look like yeah. me. That's bad. For yeah, anybody. it was not a good situation to start off with, and I don't think they were very tough at the beginning of the year. I don't think they fought for the ball. I don't think they were running routes well. They were not getting open, and whether that's them or whether that's the scheme, I, I don't really know. But I thought the receivers played a huge part in, in why things were not going well. But man, the offensive line had their share as well, uh, and so did DJ, of course. But man, it, I, I really couldn't point to it. I, I know we went a, around the horn last year about all this and try to decide who was more at fault. And honestly, my opinion probably changed every week with each game. Houston, you're back. Thank you for getting in. I, I guess it was, you know, just loading yeah, or whatever. Uh, but saying. you look a lot better now. Look even more clear than before. So that's that's the that's the big point. Mel Graves over on YouTube says, if Blake Miller does start, he will be the only, the second true freshman to start on the offensive line. The only other was Mitch Hyatt. So – Interesting note there. Clemson Carson gets in, says, I think Thomas Austin is a big upgrade at offensive line at coach. Houston, you're kind of nodding there. What do you think? Well, I want to point this out because I don't think a lot of people realize this. Georgia State never had a winning record in football until Thomas Austin was an offensive line coach. And his first oh, two okay. years, they went to bowls. No, so they went again, you know. That's the kind of that's the kind of stats that I like to get from Houston. That's why he's part of the show because he has those odd stats that I would never think to look up, but they're really good, and really prove your point, Houston. I, I agree with Houston, and, and I just want to point this out too. Week one, because all these players that Thomas Austin recruited are still at Georgia State. You know who they play week one this year? South Carolina. Right. So you have a team that struggled <laughs> to stop the run last year, going against the number eight ranked rushing offense. Twenty twenty one wow. at Georgia State. Just saying that. Keep that in mind. Betters, the line's minus twelve. <laughs> Typhoon says Miller the killer. Miller the killer. 
Um, Tyson also typing also gets in and says, it's okay, Big Al. I've been waiting for the offensive line to be better for years. I'm always the optimist. Yes. I think it's good to be the optimist. He also says, I uh, got a lot of good, good comments here. Sounds like Stadler is coming on lately too. Mm-hmm. Um, Carson says, we got some studs on the offensive line this year. I think, I think it's improved. You know, I think it's improved. But as Al said, you know, be careful what you say because, you know, the preseason hype, as I just got done hyping up DJ for 15 minutes, the offensive line, we can do the same, but we want to see it on the field. Obviously, those guys want to see it on the field, too. They want to perform on the field as well. Absolutely.